السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حيّا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أن يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ومن سورة الأحزاب يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ومن سورة المريم فأجاءها المخاض إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي صدق الله العظيم we begin this khutbah the same way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began his khutbah 1440 years ago. By saying, indeed, all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his help and we seek his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our own souls. And the evil of our own actions. And that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be guided, no one can misguide them thereafter. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to be misguided, no one can guide them thereafter. And I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his final messenger. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would then continue to recite a verse from Surah Al-Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullah O you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haqqa tuqati. As he deserves to be conscious of. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would then continue to recite a verse from Surah Al-Ahzab. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Again reiterating the importance of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا and speak words of absolute truth. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ If you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your deeds. He will direct you towards goodness. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And He will forgive you your sins. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And the one who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, he has already attained the greatest attainment. My brothers and sisters, there is no single person in this room that has not gone through some kind of difficulty, some kind of trial in their life. Whether that's sickness, any kind of mental disease, spiritual disease, any kind of financial instability, every single person in this room has suffered in some kind of way. And as Muslims, it is important to understand why exactly 
trials and tribulations happen. And the reality and the nature of these trials and tribulations. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and He asks us, in the second verse of Surah Al-Ankabut, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ that do the people really believe that they will be left to say and they will say we believe and they will be not tested after that? My brothers and sisters, there are six articles of our faith, basic articles of our faith that we must believe in to be Muslims. That's Al-Iman Billah, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal-Malaikati and his angels. wa kutubi and his books. wa rusuli and his prophets. wal yawm al-akhir and the day of judgment. And finally, the last one is وَالْقَضَاءُ وَالْقَدْرُ The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an integral part of our faith. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he narrates, he says that if a person establishes this pillar of faith, if he establishes an understanding of qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has established his tawheed. He has understood the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a man destroys this pillar, if he misunderstands this pillar of qadr, then he has destroyed his tawheed. He does not understand the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verses that I recited at the end of the Arabic portion of the khutbah, فَأَجَاءَهَا الْمَخَاضُ إِلَىٰ جِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ Verses from Surah Al-Maryam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares the story of Maryam radiallahu anha. And he says the pain of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. And she says, holding this palm tree, قَالَتْ يَا لَيْتَنِي مِتُّ قَبْلَ هَذَا She says, I wish that I had died before this. Can you imagine the difficulty that a person must go through to say that I wish that I were dead? And this is Maryam radiallahu anha. And she not only says this, she says, يَا لَيْتَنِي مِتُّ قَبْلَ هَذَا وَكُنْتُ نَسِيًا مَنْسِيًا And I wish that I was forgotten into oblivion. I wish that I had never even existed. These are the types of trials that people go through. But why does this happen? So many of us have struggled and have gone through difficulties. And these difficulties lead us sometimes to ask, why does this happen? And while it is not befitting of the servant to question his creator and to say, what is your rationale for this? Out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given us an understanding through the Quran and the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to understand why these things happen. As for the story of Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam radiallahu anha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمْ That do you not remember that we sent the angels to Maryam? And they said, O oh Maryam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ Allah has chosen you. وَطَهَّرَكِ And He has purified you. وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ And she, not only has Allah chosen you, He has chosen you amongst all of the women of the worlds. And the maqam of, of Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam radiallahu anha, has been raised because of her endurance during her, her trial. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he tells us that a man comes to him, the father of Musa ibn Sa'id radiallahu anha, and he asks him, who are the people that are the most severely tested? And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam replies, they are the prophets. And then the next best, and then the next best. A man will be tried according to his level of religiosity, the level of his deen. If his deen is strong, if he is firm in his religion, he will be tested severely. And if his deen is weak, he will be tested according to his faith. That much is that which he can handle. Now listen to the last portion of what the Prophet ﷺ says in this narration. He said, a man will continue to be tested in this earth until he walks upon the earth sinless. The reality and the nature of trials and tribulations that are sent to us. The reason they're sent is for us to be purified now rather than be purified later. These are ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieves of, of, us of our sins and our burdens and makes things easier in permanence rather than making things easier in temporariness. The Prophet sallallahu then continues to say in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends good for somebody, then he afflicts them with trials. And in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, if Allah loves a people, look at this wording of the Prophet ﷺ. If Allah loves a people, he afflicts them with trials. These are things to think about when we're going through some kind of difficulty in our life. Every single person right now is struggling in some way. 
These are ways to understand that Allah is raising your rank in His eyes by, making, by seeing the reaction you have towards these trials. Are you going to be patient? Or are you going to question the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Someone came to the teacher of Imam Suyuti, Imam Aqfasi, and they asked him, why is it that upright believers, why is it that good Muslims are tested in this world, in the life of this world? And the Imam, he gives a beautiful answer and he says, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants their hearts to yearn for the life to come. But if He made this life, the life of this world comfortable for them, they may wish to never leave it. And the desire for the life to come will diminish from their hearts. The Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith narrated in Bukhari as well, No fatigue, nor disease, nor sorrow, nor sadness, nor hurt, nor distress befall a believer. Even if it is the prick of a thorn, even if it is the prick of a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sins because of it. And look at the wording of the Prophet here. What does he say? Fatigue, this is something physical. Disease, this is something physical or mental. Sadness, hurt. These are things that can be emotional, physical, mental. These are the kinds of stresses that humans go through, especially the believers. And the Prophet has covered every single base and he has said, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Think about this as a purification for you. Are we thinking about these types of things when we're struggling? Are we thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving me for whatever I have done? These are not punishments. These are ways to increase your sight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we learn from the story of Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam radiallahu anha, that after her difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to her angels. And we know from the Quran in Surah Al-Fussilat, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقاموا. That those of us sitting here, those of us that are Muslims that say that Allah is our Rabb, Allah is our Lord, ثُمَّ استقاموا, And they stay steadfast upon them. تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah sends upon them angels. And the angels say to them what? أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not worry, do not fear, وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And do not grieve. That you have been promised paradise. These are the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts tranquility in our hearts. But not only this, we know from the words of the Prophet wasallam, if Allah loves a people, He tests them. So the angels came to Maryam alayhi salam, Maryam radiallahu anha, and they come to us. But what if our name is mentioned by the creator of, of, of everything Himself? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love Abdullah, I love Fatima. What if he declares his love for us to the heavens? We find a hadith, a hadith Qudsi, narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is quoting Allah, and Allah shares with us that when Allah loves a slave, he calls Jibreel and the heavens, taking you by name, saying, Jibreel, I love so and so. I love Hasib, I love Abdullah, I love Ibrahim, so love him. And Jibreel loves that which Allah loves, so he loves him. And he goes to the rest of the inhabitants of paradise and he says, O oh, inhabitants of paradise, Allah loves so and so, so love him. And the, the permanence, the acceptance of this person is established in paradise before it is even established in this world. Because of their ability to not be reactionary to the trials and tribulations in this dunya, to persevere and to be patient amongst them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then follows this by saying after his establishment is built in the, in the akhirah, in paradise, it is built for them in this dunya. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet said, man will continue to be tried, a believer will continue to be tried until he walks upon the earth sinless. And he said, that if Allah intends harm for his servant, then he delays the punishment for his sins until the hereafter. If you are going through difficulty, you are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that if a person walks upon the earth sinless through his difficulty, imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking your soul in that moment and meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when the sun is 96.7 million miles closer than it is today, one to two miles away from our faces. The earth is flattened, the mountains have been crumbled, 
and mankind is worried and the mizan is brought before you and the scale is brought before you and your good deeds are being weighed and your sins begin to disappear and your good deeds become heavier and heavier and heavier. I guarantee you every single one of us will say Alhamdulillah that I had been tested now rather than I had been tested in the hereafter. I guarantee you this would be our words. And then hearing Salamun qawlan min Rabbir Rahim. A salam from Allah. From a Lord of mercy. And the angels ushering you saying Salamun alaykum tibtum. Peace be upon you, you have been cleansed. Fadkhuluha khalidin. And they open the gates of Jannah and they say enter in and abide in forever. We have to change our understanding of the nature of these trials and tribulations. People are going to suffer. This is known. How we react to that suffering is what's important. Bismillah, Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. My brothers and sisters, it's very easy to share these statements of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and share the stories of our awliya and of Maryam radiallahu anha and these great giants. But it's difficult for us as humans in this age to internalize this message. What can we do? What are some action items that we can take to actually understand the nature of these trials and to change our thought, pro thought process and become akhirah minded instead of, instead of dunya minded one is to understand what the dunya is the word dunya comes from the word dani or danu something that is humiliated and the scholar said Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah he says that the dunya it adorns itself with beauty to make because people know the reality of the dunya and it knows itself its own reality it adorns itself with beauty to make people rush towards it. But the believers know, that wealth and children are only showings of this world. They're not permanent. And that what's to come is permanent. The second step is to re realize that we have to be thankful in situations that are easy for us and difficult for us. If you are thankful in situations of ease, you will be more easily thankful in situations of difficulty. Be thankful for the things, the small things in your life. And the Prophet ﷺ, he made very concisely in a miracle that's his own, in a very brief hadith, he says something that should hit us home, should hit our hearts. And he says, وسلم, the one amongst you who wakes up in his home secure, healthy in his body, and has food for the day, it is as if the entire world has been brought to him. How many of us have this blessing? We have our homes, alhamdulillah. We have our bodies, our legs are working, our hands are working, and we have our food. Are we thankful for these things every single day? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are thankful, I will increase you in more. وَلَإِن كَثَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ But if you are people that disbelieve, and Allah puts two things on opposite here, shukr, thankfulness is with iman, and ungratefulness is paired with disbelief. Be thankful for the little things that Allah has given us. And waking up in these three scenarios, having a home, having food, and having a healthy body, these are not small things. These are things to be greatly thankful for every single day. Two years ago, alhamdulillah, I had the chance to visit Jordan. And there's a personal account I want to share with you to show you that people these t in today are struggling in understanding the reality of these trials. And during Ramadan, we went to visit Syrian refugees in Jordan. And during the last couple days we were there, we sat and we spoke with a young man named Faida. Faida was 16 to 17 years old from a small town in Syria called Homs. And many of you know when the revolution began, this was one of the first cities to be hit. Faida, and he's narrating to us his story, he says, my father worked in graphic design, my mother worked in textiles, and we came from a good middle class family. When the revolution began, my parents thought this would be something that would not last a very long time. But as weeks passed, they realized this is something that would not blow over quickly. So they made a plan to escape their home. 
A few nights before they were planning on leaving their home, a bomb fell upon their house. Faida's parents, the portion of the house where they slept, the bomb had hit there. And Faida narrates his story and he says, Alhamdulillah, my parents died. And my friends and I that are there, we said, after he narrates the story, saying every other word, Alhamdulillah, we said, how can you say Alhamdulillah? And he says, I am content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have taken care of my seven-year-old sister and my nine-year-old sister, and Alhamdulillah, we are content. People are really struggling, and they have understood the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going to be amongst these people that when we see Allah, we are sinless? These are things to think about, brothers and sisters. We are not really suffering. And I don't mean to diminish our suffering here. But people are going through things that are worse. One of the salaf, he would say, Shurayh, he would say, Verily, when I am afflicted with a calamity, I praise Allah four times. The first thing I praise Him for is I say, Alhamdulillah, was not worse than it was. It could have been worse. Number two, I praise Him when He provides me patience to deal with the trial. That the patience itself is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I praise Him when He guides me to supplicate appropriately and hoping for the reward. Understanding that your maqam will be raised, you will be rewarded for this. And lastly, I praise Him for not making it a test in my religion. Because people understand, those that are the awliya of Allah, that the tests of the dunya are, are minimal, they are temporary. The test of your fate and the test of the akhirah, those are the tests of permanence. The last thing I will leave you with is to understand these trials and to go through them and persevere through them correctly. Is to build a connection with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. When you are struggling and your heart is in turmoil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, With the remembrance of Allah, your heart will find tranquility. And he continues to say, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That we have revealed this Qur'an and in this Qur'an is a healing and a mercy for the believers. How else are you going to understand Allah if you do not talk to Him through His Qur'an? These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let them come into you, let them speak to you and let them make life easier for you. A man came to the Salaf and he asked him, how much Qur'an should I read? And the Salaf here, he replied to him, equivalent to the amount of happiness that you are looking for. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the people to understand the nature and the realities of these trials. And may He free our scholars that are imprisoned throughout the world. And may He help our brothers and sisters in China, Africa, Palestine, Egypt, and wherever they may be suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the Muslims honor and safety and strength and may He make us sitting here amongst those who meet Him sinless. And make us amongst those people who are guaranteed paradise. And make us amongst those people who enter without hisab. And make us amongst those people that He Himself sends His salam upon. Subhan rabbika, subhan, subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqim al-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الشهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Please fill the front rows first. Straighten your lines. Fill in the gaps. الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين
وأزلفت الجنة للمتقين غير بعيد هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفيظ من خشي الرحمن بالغيب وجاء بقلب منيب ادخلوها بسلام ادخلوها بسلام ذلك يوم الخلود لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا مزيد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 